we are here in uh, the Gottfrieds Clinic in, in Mölndal, south of Göteborg, and we are, I'm thankful that you take time for us to, to talk about you and your research and your experience. Um, and so please tell us a little about your academic background and your professional experience. I'm a medical doctor, uh, educated from the University in Lund. And uh, later on I made research and, and uh, passed my PhD. And um, then I got a, a chair in, in psychiatry at the University of Umeå, up in the north of Sweden. But 1977 I moved to Gothenburg and had the chair in psychiatry here at the University of Gothenburg until 1992 when I retired and se uh, since then as a professor emeritus I have uh, been busy with, with uh, chronic fatigue syndrome and, and uh, fibromyalgia and, and created this unit which we are now the Gottfried's Clinic which is an ambulatory unit uh, that means that we have uh, see patients but we, we have no uh, around the daycare of these patients. Okay, we, I think we'll come back to that. Uh, please, what, what uh, made you start being interested in MECFS? Something started that, wasn't it? Yeah, it's uh, rather peculiar because I'm a professor of psychiatry yes. and uh, chronic fatigue syndrome is not a psychiatric disorder. And I am treating the patients with a vaccine and that's not a usual treatment in psychiatry either. Uh, and the reason why I was interested was that at that time, when I started my career in medicine, it was 1957 and 1958. At that time, the Asian flu ravaged in Sweden. And I had many patients in my unit, in my psychiatric unit, who came there because they were so tremendously tired. Uh, they couldn't work. And, and the, 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 the internal medicine couldn't find any explanation to their fatigueness. So they then referred them to the psychiatric unit, assuming that this was some kind of psychosomatic disorder. Mm -hmm. I investigated them carefully, made careful medical rec records there, and found uh, that uh, they were quite normal people, and, but they complained of a tiredness and in almost all of them they said, I had the Asian flu uh, uh, a couple of months ago and since then I have felt so tired that I can't work any longer. So and the tiredness continued? Yeah, the tiredness continue all the, the the Asian flu was a rather severe disorder mm -hmm. and they were in bed for one week but afterwards they didn't get really healthy and, and the tiredness remained mm -hmm. what happened was that when I had recorded about 100 such patients carefully uh, making notes of their symptoms I got the Asian flu myself and was rather ill for one week and experienced the same thing as my patients. I was very tired, although uh, I, uh, the Asian flu had uh, disappeared, I still remained very tired. And um, then I was quite convinced of myself that uh, my infection hadn't uh, disappeared. I still had some infection in my body. And then I started with some self-experiments, but then I first have to say that at that time, which was before the antibiotic area, 1957-58, then vaccines were used very much to, as a prophylactic against infections. But a little naively, I thought that if I take uh, vaccines myself, I can activate my immune system. And in that way, perhaps I can get rid of this infection feeling which I had. 
And to make a long story short, it was a long story because I kept on for at least three years. Then I had the experience that if I took a Staphylococcus vaccine, a special Staphylococcus vaccine uh, where uh, some toxweed was added, which gives this vaccine a super antigen effect. If I took that, I improved. And these uh, fatigue symptoms disappeared. And that meant that you could continue working? Yes. Uh, uh, and I, of course, started also to treat uh, patients. Uh, and they improved also. So uh, after some time I had a, quite a heap of patients who came and wanted vaccine treatment at this psychiatric unit. And my head physician didn't really like that. So in the end I had to stop there. And, um, but uh, then I was also interested in other research in aging and dementia. So I continued with that. But I continued myself to take this vaccine. And I had to take it every month. So in fact, it, it was not really a vaccine treatment. It, it was a, an a immune stimulating treatment. Uh, and I had to continue with that. And I can already now say that I still take this vaccine every month, now since 50 years. Because if I stop, I, I, can, I get a relapse of my uh, fatigue. So what are your conclusions then that, that this vaccine does? Yeah, uh, we don't really know, but uh, we did some studies uh, together with a, a professor in immunology in, at the Karolinska Institute uh, where we could show that this vaccine g gave rise to antibody titers. Uh, and uh, then we noticed that the, especially antibodies ag against some toxins could be correlated to the clinical effect. Uh, so, um, well, I, I was convinced of this I, I continue these trials during uh, my whole active uh, period. But when I approached my retirement, I said, now I must make, some, make research of this kind of treatment. Uh, so I then started this unit I have now here. So you continue to give vaccine to some patients and they improve? Are you still doing that? I'm still doing that and still taking it myself. Well, I'm, I'm uh, only taking it myself because, as I will tell you later, the, the uh, pharmaceutical company, which is Biotech Berna uh, uh, in Switzerland, in, in Bern, in Switzerland, they, they have been sold now, so they, they don't exist any longer. But that company, withdrew uh, the, the vaccine from the market in spite of our heavy protests. Uh, and that was due to that this was an old vaccine where the manufacturing process had to be improved uh, to, to fit with the rules of AU and US and they didn't want to do that. So that was the reason why they withdrew it. So, and, and then you, you, you started this clinic and, and started to research ME, CFS more diligently. So please tell us a little more about the clinic. Yeah, the, I, I uh, had an agreement with the medical authorities. So they, I, I can uh, see patients here and parallel to this I can make research. And then we made two double-blind uh, controlled investigations where we included in the first one 28 patients 
and in the second one, 100 patients, and treated them either uh, along a special schedule, uh, either with active vaccine or colored distilled water. Because uh, if you give a patient distilled water in injections, it's a, it gives a rise to a pain, similar to what the vaccine did. And there, uh, when doing these two controlled studies, we could really prove uh, the, the, the concept. Uh, we could show that 65% of the patients improved. And there were quite a few of them who improved so much that the, um, the symptomatology was reduced with more than 50% according to a rating scale which we used to, to evaluate the effect of the treatment. So we have two controlled studies who show that this uh, concept works.